Hi friends, let's read Who's That Knocking on Christmas Eve? So let's start Who's That Knocking on Christmas Eve? High above the Arctic Circle in the land of ice and snow, the northern lights shimmer in the night like a curtain of color hanging from the sky. The air is so crisp and clear this in this northern place that one Christmas Eve long ago, boyfriend Finnmark, on his way to a solo with his ice bear, could see smoke curling up from a hut far in the distance. He was cold and hungry, so he headed toward it. Far off in another direction, someone else smelled the smoke, and he couldn't. E- and even though he couldn't see it. He raced off to tell the others. As the boy from Finnmark made his way toward the hut, Kyrie was inside feeding the fire that made the smoke roast that roast and baked the fine food. The delicious delicious soft sausage and fish and tasty buns and cake were all laid out on a pine table. Sweet porridge bubbled over the fire, and apple cider stayed cool on the windowsill. So why did Kiari jump at every creak in the sod roof? And why did she run to the window when an icicle fell into the snow? It was because in years past on Christmas Eve, trolls came when they smelled the delicious aromas coming from the hut. They would pound on the door until it burst open. They wouldn't leave until they had eaten every bit of the Christmas Eve meal. No troll invasion this year, Carrie's father said. I'm going up to the mountain to watch and chase them away. Had gone to stop the trouble before it began. So this year, Kiri was alone in the hut when she heard a soft sound at the door. Knockity knock, knockity knock. Someone was out there, but it was, but surely it was too polite a knock to be, for it to be a troll. Kiri went to the door and peeked out. There was the boy from Finar, Finmark with his ice bear. Please let me. Let me inside to warm up, he said. I'm on my way south to show off my bear for the townsfolk of Oslo. Um, I have many frosty miles behind me and many more to go. Come in, Kiri said. But I have to warn you, in years past, our house has been invaded by a pack of hungry trolls. Trolls be would be a welcome adventure, the boy said, so he came in. The ice bear crawled under the warm stove and fell asleep. Thierry and the boy had just settled down in front of the fire when they heard not so softly this time. Knockety, knockety, knock! There's no one home, the boy called out. He was searching, it was troll, so he big pushed the big chest in front of the door. When all was quiet, Kiri and the boy sat in front of the fire again. Kiri got to thinking, I wonder if the porridge is creamy enough, and she ladled a bit into bowls for each of them. They had just raised their bowl when they heard a loud knockety knockety knock. It was as if someone was pounding on the door with a big rock. No one at home, the boy from Finnmark shouted, and he ran to lock all the windows. It was quiet again, but the delicious smell wafted around the hut. Here he got thinking, is the Sasha salty enough? She took a piece for herself and gave one to the boy. They had just raised their forks when they heard a thunderous knockity knockity knock. The hut shook. They heard a loud crack. It was a cellar trap door splintered open. Kiri and the 
boy ran into the animal shell and put the door shut, just as a torrent of noisy trolls burst up from the sh- cellar. There were bat ear troll, there were bug noise troll, and and each troll was wilder and more wrathful miraculous than the one before. They munched and grunted, shrieked and crackled, splashed the cider and craned themselves with Christmas cakes. Then, when they were through stuffing themselves, they trembled out, pinching each other, stamping on one another's toes, and tweaking their long snouts, which is how trolls have a good time. But though the ruckus and din, the littlest troll spied the ice bear under the stove. He took the hot morsel of sausage he had been roasting in the fire and screeched, I have a bit of sausage, kitty, and he poked the sleeping bear's nose with it. The ice bear leaped up with a tremendous roar, his nose burning terribly, growling. He chased the little troll and all the big trolls around the table, up the walls and out the windows. Scratch them, kitty. Kiri and the boy cheered as they watched the trolls scramble off through the ice and snow, howling. Up on the hill, Kiri's father heard the shouts, so he raced down on his skis. When he saw the trolls, Kiri's father could tell in an instant that they wanted to be as far away from the little hut as they could be. Goodbye, troll, he shouted as he dis- disappeared up the mountain and, ski- and he skied home. What a fine bear you have, he told the boy from Finmark. Thank you for scaring out away those pesky trolls. You must back next year for a real Christmas feast on your way from Oslo. And they all sat down for some forage. A year later, Kiri was on the mountain gathering wood to make the fire cook their dinner off for Christmas Eve when the littlest chill troll popped out, the, uh, popped out from behind a snowbank. Missy, he called in a high crackly voice. Do you still have that kitty that sleeps on this stove? Oh yes, Kiri said. Only she has grown up into a big cat now. And she has sent kittens, all larger and fiercer than herself. Ah, he screeched, then we won't be visiting your hut on Christmas Eve. And he disappeared into a huge snowdrift. The end. I hope you like this story. See you in the next video. Bye.